This is a user review of the Eastwood VersaCut 60 220 volt plasma cutter from the perspective of a beginner. And when I say beginner, my previous experience with a plasma cutter is less than five minutes on a smaller 110 volt unit with an integrated compressor. I decided as a home hobbyist, it's time to start moving away from the consumables of the oxyacetylene torch and start moving towards something more refined like a plasma cutter. I make a pretty good effort to buy decent quality tools when I can afford them. I really toiled over which plasma cutter to buy. There was a name brand unit that I really wanted, but it was about $1,200. And I even went so far as to order a generic plasma cutter in the $300 range from a major online retailer. Disappointment quickly set in as soon as I unboxed it. I found that the torch from the generic unit was, well, I would call it garbage, and the button on it was nothing more than a paddle button held on with zip ties and exposed wiring. Needless to say, it never even came out of the box. I shipped it back. Did some online searching, and then I got a catalog in the mail with these on sale from Eastwood. They seem to get decent reviews on their site and I've purchased some things from Eastwood in the past. They seem to be a decent company and this carries a three-year warranty so I figured I'd give it a shot being almost half the price of the name brand unit I was looking at. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this and then I'll go ahead and hook it up and we'll do some test runs on it. Let's take a quick look at what came in the package. A little handheld face mask, a wire brush hammer combo, the torch which I'll go into more detail shortly, an extra air nozzle and electrode. I'm assuming this is a small wrench for these guys. This wasn't listed anywhere in the manual. I did some homework and evidently this is a flow meter to check your airflow, you can interface it to the tip of the torch. Comes with a ground lead, which is 10 feet long, and a standard 50 amp plug. The unit itself seems to be very well constructed. I'm pleased with it, especially in comparison to the generic unit that I had ordered previously, which was a disappointment to say the least. It's got a nice solid aluminum handle on top. This guy weighs a little over 40 pounds, so it is beefy, however, definitely light enough to lug around the shop without too much trouble. It's got a built-in regulator, your adjustment for amperage, and it appears to have a circuit breaker as a power switch. As far as connectors go on the front, the ground cable has a nice design with a lug on it that slips in and when you rotate it, it locks in place. Our torch, here is our airflow connector. And this must be for the trigger. And this is for the arc igniter. Pretty easy attachments there. Now let's take a look at the torch. The torch itself seems really nice. Seems to be well constructed. The switch feels good really solid. It includes this little cutting guide and it says CB70 on it. I did some searching online and evidently this torch is made by a third party. The name that comes up is Ergo Cut and what I like is that there seem to be consumables and parts readily available for this which otherwise might not have been so easy to find had it been some cheap generic torch. And as I already mentioned it came with one spare nozzle and one spare electrode. The back of the unit has a large cooling fan and two connectors one being the 220 volt input and the other being for the incoming air supply. Here you can see I've got my 220 volt 50 amp outlet which my various shop tools use and the plasma cutter will use as well. Originally my air supply came down to this block with this quick disconnect that I would hook my tools to. For the plasma cutter I've added this air filter with a water separator and a drain 
as well as a built-in regulator. And coming off of that, a quick disconnect, which I'll probably install a manifold here with multiple connections. This is where the plasma cutter is going to live for now. I've got a short three foot air supply line to go to it and I've installed a disposable desiccant filter to trap any remaining moisture. I'm anxious to get this hooked up and give it a try. This fitting on the back I had to install. It's a standard quarter inch NPT. I scrounged around and found scraps of steel in eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch, and three quarter inch. These were all rusty scraps which I cleaned up with a wire cup. An old drill bit, a grade eight bolt, piece of rebar. This is the eighth inch. I've done a few test cuts just to get the hang of it. So let me go ahead and show you. Okay, this is the quarter inch material. I used the chart on Eastwood's website to determine a setting of 30 amps and 40 PSI. Well, that went pretty well. Okay, stepping things up a bit. This is half inch steel and I've got the plasma cutter set on 50 amps, 50 PSI. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Um, these are the first cuts I've made. I mean, you're watching it right now. Somebody who has not used a plasma cutter but um, for a few minutes prior to this and a much smaller one, I just cut through half inch steel plate quicker and cleaner than I have ever done in my life. I'll tell you, if this is the most that this can do, I am very happy with my purchase. Um, I hate cutting thick metal. I don't like the oxyacetylene torches. Um, I'm constantly running out of uh, consumables on those, and I hate sawing things. I typically am cutting metal like this with a reciprocating saw. This here is absolutely fantastic. Let's take a few more cuts. That's great. All right, here goes three quarter inch. Well, I did have one hiccup there, but you can see that, for the most part, it cut through. I think that that was my fault. Let's go ahead and try again. Well, it seemed to cut the three quarter inch really nicely, actually. It was smooth sailing all the way through. The pieces didn't fall off. Instead, they got held on by little bubbles of slag at the very end. I'm not sure why that is, but I plan on finding out. Um, even if that's the case, hey, I can deal with that, but I'll bet you that it's something that I can learn to overcome. Well, it cut the three quarter pretty well, so I figured why not try one inch. Eastwood's ad says seven eighths, but uh, heck.
seven eighths, one inch, same thing. Well, that was some slow cutting, but it did cut one inch thick square stock. And I do work with a lot of thick material as I play around in the shop with machining. So it's nice to know that if I need to lop off a piece, this can do it. Drill rod. Rusty rebar, same setting. Grade 8 bolt. They said 7 eighths inch. I cut 1 inch. It was a little bit of a struggle but it cut one inch. The three quarter inch seemed to cut without a problem. Half inch, no problem. And obviously the quarter and eighth inch over here, I did get a little overzealous and tried to spin out a shape. You know, when you get a new tool like this, it's kind of exciting. And a guy wants to um, try fancy stuff right off the bat, but that usually doesn't work out. I'll get to it though. Over here, Rusty rebar, slice through nice and quick, same with the drill bit and the grade 8 bolt. Alright, the conclusion, what do I think about this? Well, overall I have to say I'm pretty darn happy. Yes, there is some slag on the cuts, but I can't really expect much difference, um, you know, since I don't have much experience other than what you just saw me do. I did a little bit of research on it and I understand that the slag um, can be worse if you've got the plasma cutter set too high or if you're cutting too slow air pressure lots of different things can affect it so i really look forward to spending more time with this tool and learning how to use it in the most efficient manner 